Hello and welcome to Two Indoor Gaming and welcome back to uh, Electronics 102. So, so far we have covered the delay gate and the inverter gate. Next up is the flip flop gate. And this one's, uh, yeah, a little bit different. So we'll just connect it up quickly from here to there. Now, how this one is different is when you have a direct link, this sends out true or false. So on or off is how, you know, it tends to be easy to think of it that way, on or off. But what the flip-flop gate does is before it will before it will send the power on it actually needs two on signals so you can turn it on like so so it's activated but to change the state it actually needs signal again okay so it needs on off signal won't actually activate or send on the power or the message so if you think of it this is telling it okay true or false right, it says it doesn't hear false it only hears true so if it gets true it'll do something send the power on or connect the power it hears true again it'll turn off the power it just doesn't hear false basically so that's what a flip flop gate does it's almost like you've got to pump it to make it work it'll only work if you pump it down okay now I struggled initially to think well how is that helpful um, maybe in complex situations uh, I, I, I didn't quite get it and then I realized uh, something I would use it for you see this timing mechanism for the door I mean it's pretty funky you step on it open it up and then it will close right and then to do to make it go again you've got to step on it again but if you've only got one entry to a room say and you just say this was my storeroom all I want to do is go in there grab some stuff and then when I'm done I'm out of there by adding from the pressure plate a flip-flop gate right? so I get it so I activate it I've got just got to walk over it quickly so on or off basically So the problem is I've got these all so close together, so I'm doing this very delicately. Uh, I should have given myself more space to set it up. At the moment, it's switched off. Right? I don't know why there's so much light there. I walk over it. It opens the door for me. Using a flip-flop gate means that even though the pressure pad has come back up, it's, so it's, it's, it's sending a false signal, by linking it through a flip-flop gate which doesn't hear false signals that door will stay open until I trigger it again so I can come in here I can organize my inventory chuck all the stuff in all the different chests oh you gotta love doing that inventory management period and then when I'm done I come out trigger it again and it closes up for me so it'll stay open as long as as long as I want until I trigger it again so all I did was put a flip-flop gate down there you can like I said you can hide it away out of sight, receives, goes, it's just the same way, just linked it, but instead of going straight to the door in the light, I sent it through the flip-flop gate first. So that's a good way, I think that's where I'd use it most, is connecting pressure plates, where I basically want something to be going until I activate the pressure plate again. So it doesn't matter that it pops back up, starts sending a false signal, uh, because false is not heard so to speak by the flip-flop gate that's how I think of it anyway true people that play with this stuff all the time are probably cringing at, at my oversimplification of concepts but it's a way that helps me connect with it in a way that the playful video just it didn't really connect with my wavelengths uh, so that helps me understand so that's the flip-flop gate you're not going to be using it too much in a basic setting like this but certainly with pressure plates you can see that going to have a real usefulness to it 
this is the logic gate and what this does uh, is give you two receive points and so that your it gives you an added complexity uh, to the switches and this is going to be important to a lot of those complex options uh, but the example playful gave which is a pretty good one you've got a, a room with two entrances you want uh, you want uh, either entrance to have a switch and either one will activate the light for you so in that case so we've got two switches just imagine them at separate ends of the room and we link them through the logic gate before we link to the lights so we could just drag this to one receive point drag this to the second receive point like so but this is probably one point where naming things is really going to help you because if you get your logic a little messed up or it's not working the way you want it to work just being able to check it, check the names I think will help you so what we're going to call is this logic one so that power signal is is going to be called logic one and we're going to call this one logic two Got that over there. Okay, I better change that. <laughs> let's 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 call it two logic. So that's the thing. You can have multi multiple uh, switches and uh, pressure plates can activate the same block if they've got the same name. Um, so you could theoretically have one LED that you could you could activate with ten different switch mechanisms if you could so desire it. Okay, so we come into the logic gate. It's telling us we've got input one, so we'll call that logic one, and input two we'll call two logic. Okay, that helps me now. If there's problem going on, I'll be able to have a look and go, okay, that's from this switch, that's from that switch. What did I do wrong? Now, if I set that to or, that means either one I turn on will activate the logic gate and it'll send that pulse on for me. If I was to select and, I'd have to have both switched on before the logic gate would send on the electrical pulse for me. Okay? And or, that makes sense, right? So I call this uh, lamp, lampy, because I lost track of what I've been calling everything else. Call that lampy. Save. Now we've got that link. These will activate the lamp. So what have I got it set for at the moment? And. So that means both of them need to be on. So if I activate one, it doesn't do anything. Activate the second. Bingo. We've got light. Right, so we turn them off. But in that example of a room with two entrances and you want either of them to work, you don't want to have to run from one side of the room to the other side of the room to get both switched on. Switch it to OR and now either of them on will work. Just like that. Now, that's as simple as it gets. But there are many other functions available here. But before I get into that, over here we've got event and value. What is the difference? Event just means the pulse is coming. Right? So all I need is to name the pulse. But a value is using the number, uh, the number selector stuff, the keypad, that sort of thing. Uh, and we'll be getting into that a bit later. So make sure events, that's one thing to, to look out for if you, your connection's not working, if you've got it on the wrong item, event or value. Okay, so some of these other ones, this will be, again, more complex circuits would be using this a lot more than you or I probably would if we're just doing basic functions of doors and lights. Uh, but if you're getting creative with games and that sort of stuff you could use these functions so you've got x or uh, this will only 
send on the pulse or output true as they put it so whenever it says outputs true you're saying sending out the pulse uh, if it says outputs false then it means uh, taking the pulse away that helps me because outputs true outputs false doesn't really it's not the language I use okay so an XOR gate just means it will send on the pulse uh, if one of them's true but not if both are true so if you've got both switched on it won't work that's all that means uh, it only one can be true at a time only one can be switched on at a time if it's an and it means it will send it will take away the pulse outputs false it'll take away the pulse if they're both switched on so switching it on is actually like a turning off mechanism a shutdown mechanism it's probably a better way to say it. so turning on with a NAND gate uh, will give you a shutdown function NOR gate uh, means it will send the pulse on only if both of them are switched off okay so it's just the opposite of both being switched on as both of them need to be switched on for it to be an active circuit and X nor gate uh, means it will send the pulse on if both are the same value but it doesn't matter if it's on or off they just have to match so you're looking for a matching uh, input and obviously you can see how already how that would be helpful in some games if you're trying to guess the code or whatever whether it needs to be a both on or off or that sort of deal okay so yeah you probably won't use those too much but like I said if you just think outputs true means sends the pulse on and outputs false means it, it takes the pulse away uh, that'll help you understand uh, some of those functions it's just a matter then of what input you want out of your switches or pressure plates okay does that make sense? Maybe. <laughs> Hopefully it does uh, make some sense to you. It took me a little while to sort of play around with that in my head. So over here, uh, just a demonstration of how you can use a logic gate to enhance what you're doing. If I just want to turn this on, right, I just flick the one switch, and we've got our Roy G. Biv LED display. But I might think, well, wouldn't it be great if that was a you know switched on switched off did it a continual pulse loop so what I've done is to activate that sometimes I might want on permanently is the top switch activates both the LED at the top but also another uh, delay gate down here and that delay gate connects with a logic gate and which then connects to an inverter gate so it comes down to the delay and that holds it for just for a bit and then sends it onto the logic gate and that's looking for two inputs right first the delay gate is sending something or seconds that say delay gate is sending something but also it needs this switch over here to be activated so at the moment because this switch isn't activated that last pulse is in a dead end it dead ends at the inverter so my lights here and I can turn it on off whatever and the, this inverter over here is holding that pulse for me so it's not doing anything extra you know, it's not going to loop apart from this weird one extra loop thing that it does anyway but if I have it turned on and then I activate this it's going to release that pulse into the which is going to switch it the message from a yes pulse to a no pulse so that turns off all the lights in sequence comes back down says yep the switch is on sends it back through as a yes pulse so you have it going on in sequence and then off in sequence and then on in sequence and I've got a permanently uh, boosting colors okay so that's 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 what it is for uh, using the logic gate there uh, in a way that keeps that delay going just means I've got a second switch changes the function of what I want to do if I turn it off it's going to trap that pulse again and the loops going to stop and it's just going to be back to this function over here so it'll just hold with all of them on at this point 
Okay. And this that leaves the numbers right here. Just set this up directly as we use. I've got my vault here with my most precious treasure inside. So what I want to do is enter the right code. Right click. Eight, nine, eight. You didn't hear that? It's a secret. And now the vault will well will it open? What did I do wrong? Eight nine eight. Enter. Well, there you go. I've done something wrong. It's not entering. Let's check my wiring tool first. Is it linked up? Looks linked up. Or is it connected? Okay. Well, like I said, give it a name and this will help. What I'm going to call this is number got an auto reset time obviously so you want it you can't send a closed signal it's either it's an on signal only comes out so you might need a reset just like the um, pressure pad num I look down here number comparison gate okay so input one we want num and it's looking for a value as its second input so that's that code and it sends out to treasure so now if I oh, pressing the wrong button there receives treasure yep that's fine and the door Receives treasure. Okay, let's give that another try. Oop, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to right click. And there we go. So it opens the door. I've also linked it to a light. <gasps> and there's my treasure. It's a big weed. But it could be like a special orchid or something. Who knows? So there we are. Um, if I put on a delay, it'll close automatically. If it has, a, if I haven't entered a delay number, a reset delay, then I'll have to close it. So it depends on what you're using it for, on how you use that function. So you basically got one item is sending, connecting to uh, the number comparison gate. If it gets the right number, it'll open up for you. So you can do a code. And again, the number comparison gate has some uh, extra options like the the, um, the logic gate. And this again will be useful if you're using it for games and things because uh, it'll give you different options. If it's if it's the wrong answer, it will it will activate. So let's say you had a trap door. Not that there are trap doors in this game, uh, but they might come up later if you were standing on a trapdoor or a falling block or something if they set that up then entering in the wrong thing would make you fall okay uh, and you might have it linked to the another link like the same number pad could link to the trapdoor and have a not equal and then it would link to the door if it was equal so if you put in the right number it'll open put in the wrong number you'll fall so, and then you've got your other options less than so you've got it if you've got to guess something that's less than a total uh, less than or equal greater than greater than or equal so it's just changing your options for your number so that's if your quiz if you've got like a quiz guess the number of or work out the sum uh, to get the answer so you'd be using this to dif differentiate the answers and the results that you want out of them Okay, makes sense. <laughs> Again, something that most of us will probably not really get into, those extra options. But if you want them, you will be very happy with them. Now, the last thing I'll touch on before we finish this up is how far does that signal go? I, I was curious, so I've tested it out, and I've set up a switch. Here we go, select the tool. And it sends out a pulse called far. That's it. I put an LED over here. You can see it's linked up. A couple more over here. And in the distance there, you can just make out where my cursor is there, are three lights. 
uh, on top of each other. Okay, so we've linked all of this up. And as an experiment, I haven't even checked out the, how this worked. I've put another LED through a transporter gate, so a teleporter. So we'll see just how if it can travel even even further than this. So let's switch it on. And what have we got? Turn that off. That one lights. Yes, these three have all lit, but the three lights on top of each other haven't lit. But I've discovered that they actually have lit. What we're, what's happening now is my render distance is short of those lights. As soon as I get close enough for the render to pick up, pick it up, boom. You see, it is actually lit. It's just that I couldn't see that it had changed. You know, that that, that view difference distance. You look on a map, see how it's got this changing sort of view distance and this little one smaller one in here um, that's the function there I guess this smaller one here is just crossed over so that I can see the change so it did connect it's just I couldn't see it because of the, the way the graphics function okay so that isn't actually a limit of the switch it's a limit of the the, the graphic graphical rendering. Now let's travel through my little teleporter and we'll see I've set up a red LED light through here we'll see if it's red or if it's turned off and this is in sort of like a little bit off to the west Ooh, the suspense. I, like I said I haven't tested this before it just occurred to me just before I started recording so I quickly set it up and then start, there we go it's on Ta -da! So it's reached this far. Let's look at the map. Right, I'm here and the switch is here. Okay, so you're looking at quite a few squares between them. We've got the distance there. So the switch is here, the LED is here, and they're switched on. So theoretically, as long as you've got the right name in there, you could put a switch here and an LED here or something to activate, and it should work. Uh, I guess if, if the, the code will stretch around the globe, so to speak, or at least the, the, the small area. Uh, that's why that's why these using the words rather than the hotspot wiring is so effective uh, because I don't have to drag it, so to speak, click on one end and then run to the other side and click it again and worry about that because it freaks out, the blue line freaks out too. The graphics don't like it when you stretch it out a bit using the words makes it much simpler so there we have it that's that's the basics of, of, of what you you get all these different items you can see in my hotbar uh, and some of their basic functions I hope that made that a bit simpler for you um, giving you some ideas like I said, I was just trying to show how they work and then maybe one practical example of, of its usefulness. Again, if you've got any comments, questions or uh, insults, feel free to put them in the comments below and I'll respond. I might even be nice about it too. Uh, <laughs> thanks for watching. Um, the next thing I post will probably be a, a, a full and thorough review of R33. Uh, I'm still on the clunky computer, but obviously by the time I get my new computer, it's not going to be really uh, that relevant if I review it that far away. So we'll go for substance over style here. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you next time on 2 Indoor Gaming.